we're sort of building up to our definition of what a kernel is. And so we're going to just leverage some information that we learned from working in a world that is finite. Okay, so if our function k is going to be an inner product, first of all, it has to be symmetric, no question about that. And then also, um, its gram matrix uh, must be positive semi-definite, which means its eigenvalues are all, are all non-negative. Okay, so now how do we extend this to the infinite case? Well, um, so let us try it, okay? We're going to officially define a kernel and we're gonna give it, we're gonna imbue it with the properties that we want it to have. Okay, so a function k is a kernel if it is symmetric and if it gives rise to positive semi-definite gram matrices. And so what that means is that if you grab, um, you know, if, so you, say you're in an infinite, uh, feature space, right? Let's say you grab a finite number of possible feature, like states for the features to, to take, okay? You grab a finite number of them, M of them, and you form a gram matrix from those. Now that gram matrix must be positive semi-definite, no matter how many points you choose, no matter where in the feature space those points are, the gram ma matrix formed by them must be positive semi-definite. Okay, so yeah, you have your space X and you grab um, seven points out of it, say M equals seven, <laughs> you could do it for any M. Okay, so you grab seven points and you form a gram matrix and that matrix has to be positive semi-definite. Okay, now, a convenient way to show that a matrix is positive semi-definite is that for any vector you like, okay, can have positive values, negative values, whatever you like, if you take that uh, vector and bookend <laughs> the uh, matrix K, or you know, some matrix K, then, um, then uh, if, if that product is always greater than or equal to zero, then the matrix K is positive semi-definite. This, this is actually completely equivalent to the definition I gave earlier, which is that all of the eigenvalues are non-negative. So that's fine. If all the eigenvalues are non-negative, that means for any C, I can do this product and it's, it's non-negative. Okay, so this is actually gonna really help us a lot. Okay, it allows us to prove a bunch of stuff about K. Okay, so the first thing we can prove is that um, if you take K of U and itself, that is non-negative. Okay, how did I do that? Well, um, <laughs> as it turns out, I just chose a gram matrix of one. I just chose one point in the space, which is U, and that gram matrix has to be positive semi-definite. And so, um, yeah, the whole matrix K is just that one value, K, U, U, and U. And so, mm, you know, that means that um, C tra transpose, C is just a number at this point, right? Because K is just a number. So C transpose times K times C is greater than or equal to zero. That means C squared K is greater than or equal to zero, which, means that k is greater than or equal to zero, okay? And so since k is just u of u, then that is also greater than or equal to zero. Okay, great. Okay, so that's happy. Um, our norms seem to be, our norms are gonna be well-defined, so that's, that's good. And then the other cool thing that happens because of this, um, because of this interesting property, uh, which is positive semi-definiteness, is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Okay, so how do I get that, right? How do, how do we get that? So we're gonna show this for m equals two, okay? I'm, I'm just gonna show it for m equals two. And the way I'm going to do it is by taking my matrix, right? I, I chose two points from my feature space and um, I created this gram matrix and I know that that has to be positive semi-definite, okay? I know that, has, that for all C, for any C that I pick, that expression has to be true. So I'm gonna pick a special C. And it has to be true for that C because it has to be true for all C. And I'm gonna choose this value of C, okay? I'll choose that vector C. So now I know that this expression up in the top has to hold the one in the cloud. So um, let's just write that out, okay? So there it is. And then if I do a little bit of simplifying, I can actually write out that whole expression and it simplifies to this. I know that K of V and V is greater than or equal to zero because I just proved it <laughs> on the last slide. And so that means that the thing in brackets is also greater than or equal to zero. 
And so I can um, just rearrange it a little bit by putting one of the terms on the other side. And now I get that, um, yeah, that this, and this is the cauchy schwartz inequality. It's right there. That's it. We're done. Cool. Okay. So, so far we have now a definition of a kernel. It is symmetric and it gives rise to positive semi-definite gram matrices by definition. Okay. So we, we defined a kernel to always give rise to positive semi-definite gram matrices. Great. So now we can use um, the kernel, the, our definition of kernel, to define a reproducing kernel Hilbert space, which we'll do in the next video. Thanks.